Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this new day, and we thank you for this opportunity to connect around the world to study your word, and we just stand amazed at the power and the technology that we have. At the same time, Father God, we do pray that you would, uh, your spirit would be with us, that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Help us to be humble as we study your word and, and not to um, um, view ourselves as over your word, but under the word, under the authority of the word, Father. Father, I also pray that we would seek to draw closer to you, not just in, in uh, um, knowledge, but also in perso a, a personal knowing of you, Father God. Bring us close to you. And, and at the same time, we do ask that you would give us more understanding. We, we, we recognize that as we understand more and more about you, that enables us to draw closer and closer to you, Father God. So I pray that you would give us new insight tonight and just be with this time. It's in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things through faith alone. Amen. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm really excited tonight. Does everyone remember the question that was asked several weeks ago that we put on hold? We're actually going to, to do a somewhat of an, of an aside study. We, we will be looking at passages in Revelation. We'll also be looking outside of Revelation. Uh, because this question is very important, and the question that was asked, it wasn't something where I just wanted to just give an answer there, because there's a, a, there's a broad context, and also the question is highly debated, so, and I'm actually glad that I didn't answer it, because it allowed me to uh, kind of reflect, but anyway, so, so, so uh, it, was a, it was an important question that we needed to discuss, and so I actually was able to, to think through it more to look at other passages and also to look in the context of Revelation. So, so I'm really excited about this. Oh my goodness. All right, so the question we're asking tonight, so this is an aside, we're not going to move further in the study, although we will look at other passages in Revelation and also one or two passages outside the book of Revelation, because this is a very important question that we need to discuss. It deals with assurance, but also a, a, a warning, okay? And so, Pastor was was very uh, did an excellent job bringing things together. If you wanted to watch that video from two weeks ago, it's posted on YouTube. I'm not going to go into all the different places. If you need help finding it, you can message me after the class. So the question we want to ask this morning is: What is the relationship of the rapture to the coming of Jesus? Actually, should say Jesus Christ, the Lord, or of Jesus the Christ in Revelation. So um, that should be Jesus Christ the Lord, uh, but it means the same thing. Um, so we, will, we wanna be asking the question, wh where is the rapture? What is the relationship there, okay? So that's the question. So uh, <clears throat> I just have a brief definition of the word rapture so that we're all on the same page. Uh, we're all on the same page. We're actually going to look at the passage that deals with the rapture. And so rapture just simply means, it means to be caught up, okay? To be caught up in the air, okay? And, um, and so everyone who is conservative in the church, takes a high view of scripture, believes in the rapture, okay? So everyone believes in the rapture. I believe in the rapture, people who historically would say, oh, you know, they spiritualized, you know, they have a different view of eschatology. If they have a high view of scripture, they're holding to a literal rapture. The, the, the mass, so, so, so tonight you might see different views on when the, uh, different views on the rapture. I, I don't want you to shut down. I don't want you to become upset. Okay. Um, because the important thing for us to recognize is that all of us believe in this meeting with Jesus Christ in the air. We'll see that when we actually get to the text itself, the text, the, the one text that teaches on the rapture. Okay, the, the debate concerns when is the church raptured? So the debate is concerning the timing of the rapture. Okay, um, so, so there's going to be different views that you're going to see. Perhaps you're going to disagree, fair enough. Uh, you have to be convinced in your own mind. And so 
Um, maybe it's a new view that you want to consider more. And so I can give more passages for you to further study if, if, if you're not convinced after tonight's study. And so um, this is something that is hotly debated in the church. So I want to give that as a preface. And so um, I just ask that you, you have an open mind. We should have a closed mind concerning the literalness of the rapture. If someone's saying there is no rapture, that's when we should become very upset, okay? Concerning the timing is, is, a, is hotly debated, but we should all be able to agree to disagree if we come to a, a different conclusions, okay? Um, the rapture is directly connected with the return of Christ. There's a direct connection with the return of Christ, okay? But there's different views as to when that is, all right? So that's coming back to the second question. Um, but, we're, but the rapture is intimately connected with the coming of Christ, the return of Jesus Christ. So those are some, those are some things that we need to get at the outset, okay? So before we get into text, before we look further, I do want to give a brief overview of when is the rapture, okay? There are three views, and I hope that you can see them there. There is a pre-tribulational view of the rapture. There is a mid-tribulational view of the rapture. And then the, the third view is actually with, with that arrow going up and down, is a post-trib, a post-tribulational view of the rapture. So just briefly, a pre-tribulation would say that the rapture occurs before the tribulation period. A mid-trib would say, mid-tribulational view would say in the middle of the tribulation, uh, Christ raptures uh, his church. And then a post-tribulational view would say that the rapture occurs at the se second coming of Christ. So when Christ returns, uh, as he is returning, uh, the church is raptured up and meets him. They're transformed in, in the twinkling of an eye. And then uh, everyone returns to earth in which there's a final judgment and the eternal state. Okay, so there's there's three views there. There's a pre-tribulational view, there's a mid-tribulational view, and then there's a post-tribulational view, all right? Um, and so we're going to look at, we're going to look at texts we're going to discuss, we'll discuss tonight, and, um, and I hope that you'll, you'll be in a better position to, deter, to make a decision of when um, the, the rapture occurs, okay? Is everyone tracking with me? Are there any questions so far or does everything make sense? The next thing I want to show us is that there is only one explicit proof text. Proof text is not a bad word, but there's only one explicit proof text that teaches us about the rapture, okay? So there's really only one proof text that teaches us about the rapture. The rest of the text concern the, set, the, the, the return of Christ, okay? So at, when we study this proof text of the rapture, um, I don't want us to bring in other uh, theological structures or, or schematics. I want us to look at what that proof text actually teaches us about the rapture. We're looking for keywords, and then we're going to parallel that proof text with other texts that don't explicitly deal with the rapture, but they deal with the coming of of the Lord, coming of Jesus, okay? Does that make sense? So we're going to first look at um, this proof text, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 17, and we're going to make uh, conclusions, observations, ask questions, and we're going to connect it with the coming of the Lord, and then we, we're going to make that connection with other texts that don't teach explicitly about the rapture, but they teach explicitly about the, uh, about the second coming. Okay, is everyone tracking with me? This next text is not, this next pat list is not comprehensive. These are, these are probably most fundamental, okay? There is many other passages of scripture that touch on the coming of the Lord, the coming of Jesus, who is the Lord, which is, you know, um, but these would be the these would be the strongest other passages that deal with um, the coming of the Lord in the New Testament, and we could add to this. 
these were just ones that I, I do maybe if we can look at or we can consider. Um, but these would be the primary. So you have Matthew 16, 27 to 28. You have Matthew 24, 30. You have Matthew 25, 31 to 46. And there's many other gospel references in the other synoptic gospels. That is uh, Mark, Luke, uh, referencing the coming of Jesus, the return of the Son of Man. Uh, but I just put Matthew. So we could actually include Mark and Luke, uh, but I didn't want to overwhelm. The other passages are 2 Thessalonians 1, 5 to 12. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, 5 to 12, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 12, uh, 2 Peter 3, 1 to 13, okay? And then you have many references in Revelation, okay? There's many references in Revelation. So I did Revelation 1, 7 to 8, Revelation chapter 2 to chapter 3. Uh, so you're like, where is the coming of, of Jesus there? Okay, so we'll see. Um, Revelation 19, 1 to 4. And, and I, there's, there's others as well, um, uh, if not explicit, implicit. And then Revelation 22, 7 and following, okay? So it's actually kind of a nice bookends. There's Revelations 1, 7 and 8, coming of, the Lord, of Jesus, the, the Lord in the clouds. He's coming in the clouds. And then Revelation 22, 7 and following, uh, that might be a nice bookend there. So we'll look at that if we have time. Maybe we won't have time, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and read the passage, and what we're specifically looking at and looking for are um, ideas, concepts, and other things that would help us identify the timing. So the specific question we are asking is, So there's many questions we can ask. There is a lot of questions we can ask. I'll just repeat this. When is the rapture in relationship to the coming of the Lord? So there's many questions. There's many different exegetical points we can study, we can investigate, um, but we don't have time for all that. We're specifically answering this question in relationship to our study. That was the question that was, was being asked, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and read. And... Um, I want you to be thinking about that question as I read. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Okay, so time for us to make some observations and some connections. What are your observations? I'm just going to open it up. You have your Bible in front of you, so you can make any observation in, in, in any place. But the, I, I'm going to limit the observations and questions pertaining to our question. So there is a sequence of events that okay. are happening. Okay, good. So let's, make, let's make, just make this observation. It's a, this is a general observation. Okay, no, great. So sequence, sequence, sequence of events... And the first thing that it, it, the first event is, right, this is number one. Mm -hmm. And the action is, will descend, 
from heaven. Now let's focus. Uh, this is um, uh, source or yeah, source. This is where he's coming from. The, the, the actor is the Lord, right? Let's get more specific here. Who, who precisely is the Lord? That would be Jesus Christ. Yes. So this, to be explicit, is Jesus. Now, let's just focus in on this, state, this statement here. Have we seen this before from your study from two weeks ago? I hope you can remember. I don't remember exactly, but I remember the clouds. Okay. So, uh, yeah, no, that's good. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I'll just, I'll highlight it here. Okay. We had, we, we compared Exodus 19 and the coming, right? The coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord to Israel. And this is also being um, compared in Revelation 1, 7, and 8. And this is the, the second coming uh, oh, of, of Jesus right? So specifically, he's coming in the clouds. Um, it, this is implying from heaven. This is explicit here. It literally says that he descends. Everyone tracking with me there? So even stronger, if 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 this is if this is the same reference as so if this is the same as Revelation one seven to eight, this is actually further strengthening verse seven, right? Everyone see this? We made a comparison between Exodus 19. If you want to go there, you can go there and read it again. If that's helpful, Exodus 19 and Revelation 1, 7 to 8, there was a, a connection. We said that Jesus coming with the clouds is, is, is uh, the antitype, is the greater event that's typified in the Lord's coming in Exodus 19 to meet with with Israel on Mount Sinai, right? He descends from um, uh, from heaven uh, with a thunderstorm, with lightning, with fire, right? Um, but here, for the Lord Himself will descend with heaven. Raul has identified the Lord as Jesus, uh, and and if if this is describing the coming of the of of, of Jesus, this connection is even stronger here. Because here, this is in Exodus 19, right? The Lord. Right, everyone tracking with me there? Descends from heaven. Let's, let's make another connection here now. Uh, so we can be sure of this connection, of these connections here. We can be sure of this. Because of this statement here. Does everyone see this here? This makes it explicit, the coming of the Lord. And again, the Lord, the Lord is Jesus. <laughs> this is... Think about this to a Jew. This is so offensive because in the Old Testament, the, the word, the word, the word was given by the Lord God, the, the only Lord that you will have no other gods. There's only one Lord in the Old Testament. And here we see this being fulfilled in Jesus. This is so powerful. 
there's three references to the Lord. Jesus' name, um, uh, especially with the connection with Exodus 19, this is actually, so this is pr a primary proof text for eschatology and times, but this is also an excellent proof text for the deity of Christ, the divinity of Christ. This is also an excellent proof text for the equality of Jesus with the Father. I mean, this is, you know, I, there's so many tangents. I mean, this is so rich. This is so rich in truth. Let's look at some other things here. I'll, I'll make some other observations here. We can't do everything, but notice the manner. The manner is one here. Manner. Manner one. Is this is this is this secret or public? Is this quiet or loud? It's loud. This is no, public. public. It's for everyone. Here. Yeah, it's, it's it's for everybody. It's it's public. Yeah, uh, no, that's manner two. Not only the cry of command, it's the voice of the archangel. It's loud. <laughs> now watch this, watch this, watch this. With the sound of the trumpet of God. Manner three. Have we heard about trumpets before? Come on, where's Lottie? Have we seen trumpets before? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we've They're seen loud. we've seen trumpets in uh uh in Revelation and also in, in Exodus, right? Yeah. I have a question. Go ahead. So this is loud, right? When the Lord will come, you will hear the trumpet sound. What about those people who cannot hear? They will hear it, right? Mm -hmm. Like deaf people? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't know if we can answer that question. We, we would think that they could hear it, um, but I think that's just beyond the... In, in my opinion, I think the Lord will open everything. Yeah, and, and that could be, Atilani. I don't want to say no. I don't want to say for sure yes, though, just because this could just be, you know, you have a massive, the, the, the point being, Mm -hmm. it's going to be sound proclaimed throughout the whole world it's not a secret it's not a, it's the, the big point is it's not secret right correct it'll be online what do you say what do you say it'll be online <laughs> online here we have here we have another action this the second action The second action is that the dead in Christ will rock. Christ will rise. Yeah. What's that means? The one that believe in Christ that died first is the one that's going to get up? Yeah, so this would be resurrection of only... Um, or we could say resurrection of, yeah, of only saints at this point, only saints. And the way we know it's only saints is a reference here to in Christ, dead in Christ. This teaches us the, the truth of union with Christ. Those who are dead in Christ, they are in union with Christ. Okay. So what we can say here is that we have this great resurrection, right? When do we know from other scripture um, there, the resurrection happens when? When he's resurrected. Yeah, well, so there is, he's the first fruits, but then the, the resurrection in Daniel and other places, it's at the end of time, right? There's the resurrection, the judgment, in Revelation, the resurrection occurs. In Revelation, the resurrection occurs at the end. So the, the next big idea is we have the coming of the Lord, we have resurrection, which is at the end. Okay. 
And then we have the third action, which is this, which is this, this caught up. So this here is the reference to the rapture. And we meet him, we meet the Lord, there's another reference to the Lord, in the air. And then, and then there's this statement that we will always be with the Lord. So this is the picture here. The picture is this. Let me, let me draw the picture here, okay? The picture is this. If we're, let's draw this. Here's heaven. Right? This is number one. So we'll just say Jesus descends. Then you have, um, and this is going to be public. Right? This is Jesus descending. You have the ground here. You have the, the dead being raised first. I don't like that. Hold on. This is number two. And then number three. So we're having this meeting here. Okay. Now. The conclusion is that it is that we will always be with the Lord, right? This is the conclusion, okay? Now, let's go back to discuss the different views of, of the rapture, okay? In a pre-trib, uh, in, in the, 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 the pre-trib view, the pre-tribulation view says that Everyone returns back up to heaven, and then there's judgment, okay? But does the text say that? Does the text say that Jesus takes us back to heaven, and then we're forever with him? No. No, it does not. It says we'll, be, we'll forever be with the Lord. So now the plot thickens. So now it's like, okay, now I see why... There's different views on the timing of the tribulation because just as much as Jesus could take everyone back up to heaven, right? In, in here, we're also transformed. In other passages, it refers to us being transformed. We can go, Jesus can continue, Jesus can continue his trek onto earth and then judge, right? Jesus can rescue us, meet us in heaven, transform us, and then everyone just comes down and it's over, right? This, it, what I'm trying to say is that this is not black and white. Mid-trib mid says that Jesus does, does it during the middle of the tribulation. And then post-trib, post-tribulation view is this view here that we all meet and then he returns and judges and it's the end of time. Okay. So I will, I will share my cards. I will share my cards. Um, uh, I hold to a post tribute uh, and I'll, and I'll show you some other reasons why. Um, I think for here that this is giving us more information concerning the return of Jesus, and it just fits in Revelation 1, 7 to 8. Um, if you hold to this view or this view, you have to say that there is a second coming and then a third coming, <laughs> in my view. Because he comes, oops, no, we're going back up to heaven, and then we'll come again. You know, I just, the, the fact to, to me this, this here tells us the timing. The come, when is the coming of the Lord? It's, it's Revelation 1, 7 to 8. 
he's coming with the clouds. Many who are pre-trib, and, and I used to be pre-trib, and many of us are probably pre-trib. What the response would be would say they combine this with with John 17, where Jesus says, "I'm preparing uh, a, 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 a mansion for I'm preparing a mansion for you," and so they say, "Oh, so when it's when it says." Uh, we will always be with the Lord. It must mean that we combine First Thessalonians four with John seventeen, and so it must mean that Jesus is going to bring us back to into heaven. But again, to have that type of interpretation, that's not what this this text says. So it just, you know, we could discuss John seventeen. I think something else is happening going on there, and and it is true that. Jesus has prepared a place for us, and those who die now are with the with, are with Jesus. So John 17 is occurring now. I just disagree that it, it occurs here, and, and I think that other passages will further clarify this. Any questions or or, 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 or thoughts or or feedback, or if you want to push back or ask a follow up question, um, um, yeah, go ahead. You mentioned the tribulation. Did you explain what the tribulation was you're talking about? So, just to be. Yeah, great. So, the, so, so we're going to study the tribulation in Revelation. The, tri the, the tribulation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, um, tribulation is a great time of trying at the end of of the age. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I don't want to go too much into it because I I do want Revelation to just. To, to teach us on it, um, but I'm using this more for those who are familiar with the view. If we didn't have a view and we just read Revelation, I think that this would just be the natural. This would just be this would just be that th this is the view of Revelation. Um, there's a great difficulty for for people trying to find a place for the rapture um, um, elsewhere. There is one place in Revelation where people will try to insert a rapture in which God, Jesus removes and brings to heaven. And we will discuss it when we go there, Revelation. But um, yeah, this is, this is the. Tim. Yeah, go ahead. So we don't go to heaven until um, the rapture. Oh no. So, so this, so, so this is referring to, the transformation of our body. So all of us, all of us, when we die, our physical bodies go into the earth and our, our soul, our spirit is present with the Lord in heaven. Okay. This is referring to the transformation of, of the resurrection in which we are now incorruptible. We are now incorruptible. Um, uh, literal new creation like Jesus, the firstborn of the dead, right? The incorruptible state. So that's, that's what's being discussed here. Not, not, not us living, like, for example, my, my mother passed away in 2015. She is in heaven with, she's present with the Lord. Okay. But this is referring to when Jesus returns, her body will be resurrected and, and she will be transformed. We will be brought up and transformed. All of us will meet, all of us will meet Jesus in the air like he is transformed in this new incorruptible state. If I may add, well, the, the, re the, the resurrection talking about is really when, when, when we shall be like him, you know, this in the passage, uh, that's the resurrected body. It's not the resurrection like Lazarus or the girl, you know, the 12 year old girl, that's the, the, when they were resurrected from the dead because they died again. But the resurrection here is, you know, when we, when we transform into the, the, the Christ likeness, the, uh, the, uh, the, we shall be like him, the, the resurrected body, the glorified body that uh, yes. the Bible is talking about. Yes. Excellent. That we will never die again. Yes. So I'm still trying to follow them. Um, in, pre in the pre-tribulation uh, version, that means uh, we are going to join him into a kingdom in heaven. 
for seven and years. In the, yes. in the post tribulation, the kingdom will be on earth. Yeah. So, so we will we will really study um, because because Revelation is full and em really emphasizes the coming of Jesus. That's really the, the huge emphasis, and you see the his heavenly kingdom descending onto earth. And so that's really when, uh, so G Jesus's kingdom is present. His eternal kingdom is present in heaven. He's there. He's the first, first fruits of the dead, the firstborn of the dead. Okay. That eternal kingdom is coming to earth. And at his coming, the rest of us are like pastor said, transformed and conformed into this incorruptible, imperishable state. And then his kingdom is established on the earth. And you're go we're going to see that in revelation. Okay. So, um, yeah. Maybe, Tim, just to give uh, what the tribulation is. The tribulation is the seven years of the reign of the Antichrist. Yeah. Right? Wherein the debate is whether the Christians will go through that seven years. Yeah. The pre-tribulation believer says, no, we don't, because God will not allow us to go through that, because no one will survive. So yeah. before that tribulation, before the reign of the Antichrist for seven years, or the 666, everything like that, the, the, all the believers will be caught up in heaven, yeah. and what's left are the unbelievers. Yeah. Then the mid-trib the, the, the mid believes that, now, well, the Christians will experience the three and a half years of that, and then the possibility is that all the Christians will go through the seven years of, of really during the reign of the Antichrist, and we will just be, you know, yeah. going through that. Yes, yes, that, that's it can correct. Never, whatever you believe here will never affect your salvation. It's, that, this doesn't have anything to do with our faith in Christ. Our, our salvation is secured in Christ. Yes. So whether you believe in pre trip that's fine. Because all of these have, they, they have their own uh, uh, supporting scriptures. Yeah. They have their own uh, su supporting verses. It's just really your own preference, how you understood. But it, it's not going to be affected. Your salvation will not be affected. No, that, that's really good, Pastor. And, and as we study Revelation, we will discuss more of these concepts. And we'll, we'll really get into um, the different views, et cetera, et cetera. I, I just, um, it, it's really hard because I, my fear is always that I want us to see what the text says first. And then that helps formulate our our theological understanding or truth. If, if I just give all the different charts and everything, we just revert into a, a, a framework. Now, perhaps the framework, as we study it, it comes, it's like, okay, this is what the, this is what is being taught. But I just, I, 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 I'm afraid that when you give all the different charts, you explain all the different things, we automatically just revert into those different, those different systems and we don't actually allow the, the text to teach us. So, so what one comment that Pastor made is that that a pre-trib says the saints are not there; they're in heaven, and that God's judgment is there. Um, throughout Revelation, the saints are actually present in the tribulation. And so, how do you define saints? And so, there's different ways to define saints. But the, but 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 again, it's it's one of those things where I I don't want us. In this situation, I want the text to be primary. I don't want our schemes and systems to be to be primary. Uh, you know, I'll say this: um, comparing this coming of the Lord with Revelation one seven eight, I don't see how someone. It would be very difficult to to, to see a pre-trib position, mainly because one of one of the major points of the pre-trib is that. This is a secret return. No one knows about it. Everyone's just gone. So we've all seen the Left Behind series. It's all that just everyone vanishes and, and no one no one knows, right? The planes crash, but everyone's just gone, right? And everyone's seen the Left Behind series that have seen the different um, books, right? Um, it, it's a secret return. And, and, and many of the theologians, at least earlier ones, would say it's a secret return of Jesus. It's not his public second coming. Um, the difficulty, though, is that Paul is going to great lengths to say, no, it's a public coming. It, it, it's a cry of command. It's very public, 
right? So, so, so there are, in my opinion, there's a lot of issues with, with the, 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 the that's why I changed from pre-trib to post-trib because I couldn't explain the fact it's public, not secret. The fact that I would have to say that Jesus is because here it's explicitly mentioned his coming. His coming is explicitly mentioned. So then I would have to say there's actually three comings. There's the first coming on earth. There's the second coming in the rapture. There's the third coming at the end of the tribulation. So those are some difficulties that you'd have to consider if you maintained a, a, a pre-trib a pre-trib view. Um, Tim, is it possible that it's all true that this period is this is not just a you know an instant period or but the timing is maybe number of years or you know yeah. is this i'm just wondering it's just like you know different interpretations of the creation that it's not in the days that we know days but it might be in terms of centuries or it might be in terms of years so i'm wondering if this view you know the, you can also interpret this coming as not just an instant point in time but may span several years or centuries or whatever no and, and so and so i understand what you're saying and um Again, I would come back to the text. So let me read the text. And again, does the text, is it more probable or less probable that a, a, an extended period of time would be here? For the Lord himself will descend with the cry of command, the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God. Then the, the dead in Christ will rise first. So the resurrection is occurring with the coming, right? Then we who are alive, who are left, will be called up with him together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so I don't see how you could read that as a period of years and n n number one and number two um again the, the the key concept that we can't get away from is this this concept here this is the coming of the lord revelation 1 7 and 8 behold he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him and those even those that pierced him uh, uh again it sounds just like this the only difference being this is giving more details than, than, than Revelation 1, 7, 8 seems to more of be a summary statement. Uh, this statement seems to be giving more details, and the details are, are, are surrounding uh, not the fear, but encouragement. So this would actually make sense that the context that Paul is trying to, he's trying to encourage people here, so he's not going to focus on the aspects of the fear component of the coming of the Lord, which we really had that sense, right? Everyone left the sense with Revelation 1, 7, 8 as, as like, wow, this is going to be insanely powerful coming, right? Here now, it, it's there's a slight nuance. So my question, Joy, would be, is this describing the same of, event from a different perspective with a different purpose in mind? Or is it spread over several years and you know i'm not saying you can't have that interpretation to, to me i just i i, I it, it's a difficult read because it seems to be it seems to be the same event it really seems to be the same event let's do this um think about that ati joy let's look at some other passages of scripture briefly you know we're talking about pre-trib mid-trib post-trib and, and and yeah that, that that's that's kind of a moot point uh, when is when does this occur? At the coming of the Lord, uh, and we shall see him in the clouds. He's coming with the clouds, and so, you know, bringing it back to 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 what is Paul saying? What is Revelation saying? I think what Mila is saying is you can talk about these other things about this, but what getting back down to the to the rudimentary level, to the foundational level, it is at his coming. So we have all these other terminologies. And, and those are helpful because you have different views. And so we need to understand the terminologies uh, to help us. But uh, if you notice, I did not bring them up until there's the question, because naturally ha we'll have these questions, but I do want us to come back to this 
the coming of the Lord. And so what I, I hope that we can see is that this is, this is, this is a, giving us a bigger picture of the same event. It's giving a, a, us a different side of the same event. So two weeks ago, there was a fear component. There was a fear component, Biba. Uh, um, and so at the same time, the coming of the Lord should, I don't want to take away from that fear component. We should have that sense. Revelation 1, 7, 8 is giving us a fear component. 1 Thessalonians 4 is giving us an encouragement, okay? So we should both be encouraged by the coming of the Lord, and we should be uh, fearful, not in, a, not in a terrifying fear, although that would be the reaction of us as mortal beings, but in a reverent fear and, and submitting to the Lord. So what I want to do now is we're almost done here. Um, I, I gave a bunch of other texts. I'll put them back up on the, on the screen later, or actually I'll just I'll post the list for you to look at. What I want to do now is I just want to highlight several passages in Revelation that describe the coming of Jesus, okay? And so um, I, I want us to be thinking about how Revelation wants us to consider the coming of, of, uh, of Jesus. So let's go ahead. Let's, let's turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 2. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 2. So we have, the, in, next week we will discuss the vision that John has of we will start to begin to discuss this vision of the exalted risen uh, Christ. Okay, John has this vision, okay? Um, we won't discuss that tonight. But if you notice here in verses uh, 17, 17 to verse 20, um, Jesus lays, lays his hand on John and says, fear not. So, uh, we'll we'll come back and look at that. so so this idea of fear not is this idea of of assurance that was mentioned right fear not I am the first and the last the living one I died and behold I am alive forevermore so there's there's a there's an assurance component here but then there's also a fear component I have he possesses the keys of death and Hades. So he's the big dog. He's the, he's the key. He's the key master. Now we're going to study each one of these, these, uh, each one of these uh, um, uh, teachings that are given to each church. But what I want us to note here is let's just, look, I want to highlight something in each of these churches. So, so Jesus writes uh, here, he says, um, he says, write, therefore, the things you have seen, those things which are, and those things are about to take place. And so then he's going to write, he's going to give a, a message to each one of these churches. And look at after each, in each message, look what he, he, he has uh, various things he says to them. Listen to what he says here. There's a warning. Uh, verse five, remember, therefore, where you have fallen, repent and do the works that you first did. If not, I will come. <laughs> This is coming of the Lord, right? I will come. This is the Lord, and this is coming. So throughout the seven letters, maybe this is your assignment for next week as we begin to study. Um, there is this warning of coming in uh, judgment, right? He will remove your lampstand unless you repent. So there's assurance and warning, okay? Assurance and warning, fear not. <laughs> Write this, you have some sin. You need to repent and get things right, church at Ephesus. If not, I will come, all right? So there's this, this warning, all right? So I'm not going to give any more warnings. Uh, I'm not going to give any more references. That's for you to study in your own time. Search through Revelation 2 and 3 about... Uh, the Lord coming, okay? It's so interesting. And this is connected with Revelation 1, 7 to 8. And Pastor concluded along with Ronnie two weeks ago, right? They said, they said like, wow, there's this fear component. Like, you know, uh, uh, Pastor said like, yeah, yeah, there's assurance, but I need to be on guard, right? We, we need to be, 
we can't just be lazy, right? This is not a time for us to, we need to be working. As I, if, if I recall what, what pastor said, okay? Um, so I'm not gonna go to any more of the church letters of the churches, but here we have an example where uh, the question is, is the rapture some other time where everything's fine or is the coming of Revelation 1, 7 and 8 meant as also a warning to the church? I want to say that there is both assurance in the coming of the Lord and also a warning. To those who are faithful, it's assurance. To those in the church that are lazy, that are, that are there's a warning there. And, and of course, those who are in Christ, those who are in Christ, um, uh, there should be no fear, okay? But that doesn't remove that we will still, uh, um, again, this would be a, a side study, but we will still stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive what was done. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So even though we're not in danger of eschatological judgment, we will be judged by what we do. Here there is a, um, anyway, I don't want to go, I don't want to go too much into this because we have to study it, okay? But I just want to, I just want to, what I'm trying to highlight here is that um, <clears throat> the coming in Revelation 1, 7, and 8 has to be seen in the context of Revelation 2 and 3. Of Jesus' warning that he's going to come to the churches to assess them. Okay. All right. Um, and there is this, there is this, uh, for those who are faithful, uh, there's there's a there's assurance. Those who are truly in Christ, there's assurance. So even in the churches that are lazy, there are faithful ones in the church. And so we'll actually see that distinction there. So again, uh, I'm not in any way bringing out something of oh works based salvation oh you can lose your salvation i am bringing out a warning to the church okay i hope that's making sense the, the last passage i want to go to before we close tonight is uh is the end of revelation so let's go to revelation chapter 22 revelation chapter 22 again we're not going to go into all the details here we're not going to go into all the details. I just want to read to you. I'm going to read to you. Again, passages referring to Jesus is coming. Okay. So think about how it reflects upon us and upon the question that pastor had, had presented. And he said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. Literally, a restatement from Revelation 1. So this is a bookend. Revelation 1, 1 to 3 is the, is the beginning. Revelation 22, 6 and following is the bookend. Verse 7, and behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecies of the book. So again, there's that blessing, that blessing that we discussed before. Uh, and it just highlights the keeping component. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down and worshiped at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said, you must not do that. <laughs> Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of, the, of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still do filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, re, re, repetition, verse 7, verse 12. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay to each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end referencing Jesus, not God the Father. Blessed are those who wash the robes so they might have a right to eat of the tree of life, <laughs> that they may enter the city by the gates outside of the dogs and sorcerers, the sexual immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright and morning star, the spirit and the bride say, come. The spirit and the bride says to Jesus, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who desires to take of the water of life without price. I, 
I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, I will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book of the prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and the holy city which is, which is described in this book. He who testifies, again, rep repetitive word, I mean, it's just all over the place, to these things say, surely I am coming soon. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. So with that, <clears throat> I want us to conclude our study by answering pastor's question. Uh, I believe that when Jesus returns, that is when the rapture will occur prior to his judging of all. Uh, your assignment can look can be can be to look at when precisely that coming is. There is a place I did not go there. There is a place in Revelation that describes the coming of Jesus explicitly. That can be your homework assignment. But I would say that to answer his question, when Jesus comes with the clouds, we will be caught up. We will be caught up in the air, transformed, conformed to his image. And then when he comes down in final judgment, we will conquer with him. But until he comes, until he comes, there is assurance, fear not, for those who are in Christ. There is also, there is also a warning to all of us. And you identified it. The text pushed that warning to all of us. There is assurance and warning. Uh, we're teaching in class, who is the Lord? The Lord is the sovereign king of the universe. He has all power, authority, and presence. And he is our heavenly father. We are his sons and we are his servants. Uh, both are true. And so we should have a reverent fear. We should be faithful to what he's called us to, 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 to do. And we must keep the words of the prophecy of this book. And so with that, we answer the question. And next week we will continue. So your assignment, your assignment, should you choose to accept it, be reading Revelation the whole book, if you can, but looking specifically at Revelation 1, uh, 9 to 20, and also Revelation 2 and 3, because that's the next vision. So really the vision is Revelation 1, 9 to, to, to the end of chapter 3. That's the first vision that we will look at. Uh, again, the, the vision, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the vision that, uh, of Jesus Christ. So um, that's your assignment, should you choose to accept it. And next week, we will discuss Revelation 1, 9 to 20. So that's our goal for next week, Revelation 1, 9 to 20. But there's a whole vision that begins in verse 9 and ends in verse uh, chapter, the end of chapter 3. So with that, I will return the study back to, to um, Pastor.